I've just done a dead um, R1 and R2 test on the socket outlet. I've got a value of 0.24, it was fluctuating between 0.24 and 0.25. Sometimes it can be very useful to do an R1 and an R2 test live, which this particular instrument will do. It'll be interesting to see how accurate it is. I'm pretty sure it is quite good. Um, the first thing I need to do is measure the resistance um, at the board here, the impedance between line and earth using these leads and probes. And then I can go to the socket and carry out my test. So what I need to do first of all is zero these leads. Okay, so zero the leads. The little dot at the bottom here shows me what the value of the leads are. That's going to be subtracted from any measurement I take from now on. Then I set the test instrument to impedance and using this hot key I set it to Z reference. That's my reference value which is going to uh, it'll hold that value until I change it. Uh, now I need to make sure it's measuring between line and earth and it's got an RCD. So I use my hands-free function. I now test between earth and line. And you can see there's a bar at the top. That's our confidence meter. That's going to gradually get smaller and smaller until eventually the machine, the tester, will take a reading. That confidence meter is removing any uplift, um, earth uplift by, by earth noise, or any uplift caused by the RCD. Uh, it, it can take a little while, unfortunately. That's the downside to this piece of equipment, but, but actually it's far better to get an accurate reading than a reading that's close. Let's, let's do it properly. So, just got to be a little bit patient. Shouldn't take too much longer. In a minute, it, it will just switch off and give it its most accurate reading. But it's always going to be more accurate than a test instrument without that confidence meter. Because it's a socket outlet, I'm now going to have to use a, a plug and lead set. So, of course, before I go and do the test, let me zero the leads. That's the lead zero. I now need to set the test instrument back to the impedance. And using the hot key here, I'll go R1, R2. I'm now going to plug the test instrument into the socket on the test, make sure it's switched on, push the button, and let's just see where we end up. As I said earlier, the value I originally measured was 0.2425. Um, it, was, it was fluctuating between the two and it was, a, it was a dead test. You can see that from the top, there's a confidence meter of the bar at the top there. It, it's struggling with earth noise in this building for some reason. Um, but let's just give it a little bit of time because it will, it will sort itself out and I'm pretty confident it's going to give us what I would call a, an accurate reading. Um, it can be annoying, of course, if you're waiting, but, but actually it's far better to get an accurate reading than it is just to write down any old rubbish because at the end of the day, you know, any readings we write down on these certificates need to be auditable. People need to be able to come back and check. It also gives us an opportunity going forward in the future to see if the installation is degrading at all. So, as I said, although it's frustrating, much better to wait and get a decent reading. 
we must be getting close now. You can see the confidence meter is gradually narrowing. Sometimes it won't go right down to the centre because of earth noise, but it will give us the best reading it can possibly get. Look at that. 0.24, it doesn't get better than that, does it? It's as accurate as you could possibly get. I measured a dead test of 0.24 and a live test has come up exactly the same. Now that, that test alone would give me confidence to be able to write those values down and, and, and believe them to be 